Hello, and this is another quick demonstration and walkthrough of using some of the features and functions that are built in as part of the ArcSight ESM real-time correlation platform. Uh, in this particular example, we're going to dig in a little bit more detail around connector management, uh, especially in a remote connector management scenario. So in this case, we're going to be looking at a little bit more information around the ArcSight Management Center. In this example, we're going to be using version 2.5. Uh, there is a big update with regards to the devices that we monitor, uh, the connectors and the views that we can actually use to, to, to understand what's going on with regards to the infrastructure around the devices, the connectors, the loggers and so on. Um, but that's okay. Uh, I'm actually going to dig into looking at the notes and how we manage those and what does it mean? So, we actually have an example here. We've got uh, two nodes uh, defined in our fictitious little company called ArcNet, uh, one of which is actually the uh, local host. So I'm actually running connectors on this actual machine. So if I expand that out, I can see that there are three containers. Um, and we can see that there's a, a number of different connectors that are running on those. And we can also see there's one software logger. Uh, in this case, it's just running on a separate machine. Now, what I'm going to do is give an example of the worst possible, the most complicated way of setting up a remote management connector. Um, in this example, it's actually running on a, on a different host, on a different uh, virtual machine. And I, I've already done the initial setup uh, because that's pretty straightforward and standard as part of that. But I wanted to show the, the steps you would go through. Now, of course, naturally, you would probably make this a wizard. You'd probably package up the configuration files and so on. But I'm actually going to go through the process to illustrate exactly what needs to be needs to happen as part of that. What we actually need to do is we need to connect to, up to that host uh, remotely with regards to the management. Uh, so I'm actually going to do that. Um, so I, I know I actually have one running connector already on that machine. Uh, and I'm going to show that as an add another one on. But what I will do first off, though, is to illustrate a couple of things. Um, I've done the installation of the connector. It is actually just a, a syslog connector running on this particular virtual machine here. But the important thing is you need to check out this uh, agent.properties file. So uh, if I if I just go into my virtual machine there, uh, we're in the uh, install folder of where you'd install it. Just don't forget, it's the current user agent, and it's the agent.properties file. So we actually need to edit that, uh, agent.properties. Uh, of course, you could just use the wizard to do this. Uh, it's very straight, straightforward. Or you could prepackage the configuration files for this. Again, that's very simple. I'm actually doing the worst possible configuration option here. So uh, you actually typically, typically put it anywhere, but I put it at the end with regards to this. There's no uh, reference to this, so you actually have to put it in. It is documented in the uh, Smart Connector user guide. Uh, it is actually on in there towards the back of the guide itself, and it does break it down in detail for you. So it's remote.management.enabled equals true. And then you define the port to use remote management dot listener dot port equals and then I'm going to define that as 9002 because I've already got one running on 9001. That's how you make that differentiation between multiple connectors on, on uh, the same host for remote management purposes. So you can have them running different versions, different setups, and so on. So I know I've got one. It's actually a blue coat right, uh, connector that's running. It, was, it says it's a blue coat. That's a replay connector. But it's running on 9001. I'm going to run this on 9002. And of course, I could use whatever port for doing this. Uh, but it's always good to define those. So we, we save that, and what we do need to do now is just go back and run the connector. Uh, and uh, oh, site agents. So I'm just running it manually uh, just to show what's actually happening as part of this uh, process. That's okay. So the connector's running. Now what I want to do is I want to add uh, a new host. So let's go back to my, my top level here. So I want to add a new host because it's running on a different IP address. Uh, so it's 
2 and define the type. In this case, it's a software connector. Uh, the default user that defines this is connector user. There is a default password for this uh, that would define this as well. Uh, it is default. It is documented in the Smart Connector User Guide. Um, do read it in there. I'm not going to tell you what the password is, uh, but of course, I would always recommend that you change that to something that's logical uh, and you can then obviously distribute that password uh, as part of that. So just be aware of that one. Of course, I'm going to put the uh, port number of what I defined as well uh, and click add. So it goes away and connects up and it gets the uh, the actual uh, certificate that's been defined. This is actually running on a host called uh, Event Broker uh, because it's actually running the Kafka Event Broker as well. But I'll cover that in a separate video. So we'll import the certificate and it'll add the software connectors as well. And there we go, it's added it, it's defined the host. So now we can actually go up here, see the container, and it's the syslog container. That's exactly the one I wanted. But if you remember, I actually said there was an existing connector already running on this one. It's actually, it says it's a blue coat, but it's actually a replay connector. So what I can do, just to define this, if I had this already set up, because I've just shown the steps of doing this manually, but if I already had a number of connectors already set up, ready to use, I can actually just go up to the top level of my group here and go up to the very top. Uh, I need to just refresh that to you get the new host in there. Uh, I can see that new host that I've defined there. I can uh, scan it. So I can scan it all available ports. So I can start at nine, oops, 9001 and finish at 9004 just for uh, what I want to connect to user. And again, password, I'm not going to tell you what it is. But you read it in the uh, Smart Connector User Guide. Next, it's found another one. Do I want to import that certificate? Yes, I would do. I pull that certificate in. So it's, it's contacting the containers, making sure that we get everything in there. It's pulled the certificate in, click done. And hey presto, if I now go into this particular host, I now have two containers. In fact, actually I had the one with the syslog I added manually, and then I have the other one, which is the blue coat one. Like I say, if I click into that, it'll actually tell me exactly what it is. It just, it, that's just the name of it. it it's actually defined as a uh, as a, a test uh, replay one. So we can see that the type is defined there, uh, but we can see that that particular host now is running two containers uh, with two connectors on it. Uh, and of course, now I have full control over the versions and settings and configuration they have because I now have remote configuration and management of those connectors. It's as simple as that. There really isn't anything more involved in doing that process. So that was a very quick how to do the remote connector and management for a smart connector using RKMC. Thank you very much for your time.